Okay, so we are now on Unit 3, which uh, has a few more slides. It's, we're now getting fairly complex. So for this section, you'll have to have your textbooks with you. There's only so much I can fit on the slides. And the textbooks has quite a lot of nice pictures in it as well. And we're beginning here on page 177. And now we can start to classify settlements. So now we know why they are there. We know what site and situation is. We know what rural means. We know what urban means. And now we can see how do we classify settlements. And basically it works it works that we lab we give settlements names based on their size and based on their complexity. And complexity means well how many services are there, how many um how many functions do they have? So if you start at the bottom of the, f the food chain, which is all the way on the left, the isolated farmstead then that is the smallest unit of settlement we find. And an isolated, farm st uh, 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 an isolated farmstead would mean a single dwelling, a single house where some people live. That's the smallest on the scale. And if you increase that a bit, as the size gets larger and there's slightly more function, a few more, a few more of these um, isolated farmsteads, uh, if you have a few of those clustered together, then we would define that settlement as a hamlet, which is a very small uh, settlement, but just with a couple of homesteads inside. Then the final rural settlement that we get on that um, section of the of the of, of just getting a bit larger, then would be a village. So village is when you still very small in size, but um, slightly bigger population, slightly more densely populated than the hamlet. And then we move, as our settlements get bigger, we move out of the rural settlement um, classification into urban. So a village is not an urban area. A town becomes urban. So a town, as we know, fairly small population, but we start to find more services. So now in the town, we would probably find a doctor, some schools, a petrol station, some shops, maybe a factory or two, even though it could be quite a small area. If we then increase the size of that town, more people move in, it grows larger, and you start getting way more activities and functions and services, we would then define that area as a city. And you can see, this I'm looking at page 177, um, there's a nice, there's some photos there of, of what all these things look like. If the city, if you have an area that is has extremely high population density, is larger than the city, and is kind of formed when the cities grow into each other, then you start to find um, what we'd call a conurbation. The conurbation forms. So the example that they give you of a conurbation, which is a great example that you'll be familiar with, is of Johannesburg, and in many ways. Um, the Witwatersrand, so pretty much Gauteng. And what you find is that Johannesburg is kind of merging into Midrand, which is merging into Saturian and Pretoria. And Johannesburg is actually like merging with, say, Bedford View and merging with Boxburg, merging with um, with East Rand, which is going southwards, and it's also merging with the Rudderport and Krugersdorp in the west. So Johannesburg is kind of growing to this this connected urban area which we call a conurbation. Then the next level up, the second from the top, would be a metropolis. An example in your book of the metropolis is of the Cape Town metropolitan area where you've got a big city area which is surrounded by many, many little towns that depend on the city. So in the southwestern Cape, near yeah, Cape Town, you've got Cape Town which the city itself extends this massive area, but then you do find there are these tiny towns um, nearby um, that kind of rely on that big city for services and, and other functions. And then the biggest one of all is when you would have a merging of these metropoli. So you would probably find you find this in very um, in developed countries. So the example, a great example, is the east coast of the United States of America, 
we're everywhere from New York all the way down to Florida is basically a, an urban area, like one big, not a city, but a massive urban area of connected cities and connected conurbations. So a, a megalopolis is the largest uh, classification of urban settlement that you would find. And I've also put in here, you can see in the background, this big blue arrow that points towards the right. And that says, as you move along the scale, you find that the settlement has increasing size, it has increasing population, and it has an increasing complexity. Complexity means how many functions and services do you have? Are there many or are there few? So obviously at a, at a hamlet or a village, you're not going to find a brain surgeon or an investment banker. I mean, you, m you might, but probably not. If you needed to have uh, hectic surgery, you'd probably have to go into the nearest town or the s or nearest city. Um, and if you, you know, city has many many functions, but obviously a megalopolis would have a huge number of functions, a massive number of, of a variety of services, um, lots of choice in terms of healthcare and education and, and financial services, huge factories, uh, lots of job opportunities. Whereas an isolated farmstead in a hamlet not going to have that many job opportunities. There won't be lots of schools or medical facilities to to, look, to uh, choose from. And also, what increases on the scale uh, are, are you know when we talk about services would be things like your electricity, your water, your internet as well. Your access to the internet, which um, these days is quite a, a considerable requirement. Okay, so moving on, we've now looked at what, and you must go look at page 177 um, to go and see some of the photos there, they're pretty cool. Um, now we look at some of the patterns that we find. So these patterns can apply um, in various ways, and they're most uh, commonly looked at almost in terms of map work, which we'll get to. The first one on the top left there is a dispersed settlement pattern. So dispersed means there are a few uh, farmsteads or, or maybe homesteads, and there's a lot of space between them. So they're not all clustered together. They are, there's a lot of space between them. So those are dispersed. Then on the bottom left, you can see it's almost a little town where the buildings are clustered around. So where things are clustered around, we call that a nucleated settlement pattern. Nucleated means clustered around. So that could mean a rural area that's uh, so a couple of homesteads clustered around, or it could mean a little town that is uh, cl clustered around a few functions. So these are not necessarily tied only to rural or urban. On the top right, we've got a linear settlement, and we'll get to some other shapes of settlements now. But you can see that the settlement follows the line of, it looks like a river, it could also happen where you've got a uh, settlement following the line of a main road or sometimes following uh, the line of a coastline. And then the bottom right would be an isolated settlement which is where no one's around you, it is just your little farmstead and you don't, you don't have any neighbors, your neighbors are far away. Uh, those are the four main settlement patterns for now. Um, and then we're going to move on to the final um the kind of final um slide for us which is the function of a settlement so we've looked at w what the site situation is we've looked at why it's there we've looked at is it rural or urban and we've also looked at well what size and complexity is it so we can now classify it but now let's look at the functions of of these of these two settlements the rural versus urban so the first function um, of, say, a rural settlement, if you think of a rural place, they will not have many functions, and in most cases there's probably just one activity happening there. If it's a mining town, well, then there's probably just mining happening. If it's a farming town, there's just farming going on. So there are not many functions going on in each rural settlement. There's probably only one. That's what we would call a rural settlement. They would mostly be unifunctional, which means one single function. If we compare that with a city, an urban area, 
we would call a city a multifunctional area because a multifunctional settlement because the city has way way more than one function even if you think of Johannesburg think of all the thing all the services all the functions that Johannesburg provides in terms of healthcare education business uh, the legal sector um, the financial sector uh, f uh, manufacturing transport there are so many aspects to a city uh, and so many functions so well that's why you call it multifunctional whereas if you compare that to some small little village somewhere they don't have all those functions that we do in a big city so that's the end of my slideshow for now we will then next time move on to only looking at rural settlements um, and then we will after we've looked at the rural settlements in more detail then we will sp uh, split off and do urban settlements in more detail as well please let me know how you're finding these um, and use your book your book has great maps great photos as well and these videos are designed to follow along so that you don't get lost midway and so that you can see we are actually following uh, the, the curriculum as we should thanks very much